Hello, Hawkinson School District staff and families. My name is Steve Marshall. I'm the superintendent of the Hawkinson School District. This video is intended to give you a preview of what our reopening uh, will look like for the 2020-21 school year. Um, again, this is an overview and it is uh, also a lead in to the school specific videos that you can view and those videos have been um, created by the administrators at Hawkinson Heights Elementary School, Hawkinson Middle School, and Hawkinson High School. And uh, what they will do is they will acquaint you with their schedules as of August 7th. Um, the schedules could be subject to tweaking. Um, and then also they're going to uh, acquaint you with some of their reopening um, procedures. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shift over to uh, a presentation. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think it might be helpful um, for you to see what I'm trying to describe verbally. Um, I know everybody is already aware of this point that our reopening in the fall is going to look a lot like our closing in the spring. Uh, we're both going to, our both, uh, time periods we were in an online learning model, which has led to some questions. Um, will it be different? Um, what's gonna be the same? And I'm gonna try to answer those questions. Um, I can tell you this, whether it's different or the same, it's gonna be better. Um, and why can I say that? Well, last spring, um, we were in a crisis and public schools were given quite a challenge. And the challenge was to basically establish an entirely new educational model in a matter of days. And so I feel given the, you know, given the circumstances, we did a pretty good job of responding. It's just that uh, on the receiving end, some of our learners and our families might disagree um, just uh, behind the scenes. A lot went into um, what you were receiving at home. And so I can tell you that um, because we have experienced online learning for a few months, um, that is gonna put us ahead. Uh, I think everybody is familiar with a lot of the technologies involved. And so that is also gonna assist us with a smooth launch. Um, this time around, we have some clear expectations around attendance and grading. And that's going to make a difference. Also, the learning improvement days um, in late August are going to be almost entirely devoted to effective online instruction and also building relationships uh, remotely. And I think that that is going to translate into some improved practices. Um, and when you add all that together, it's going to put us on the, on the continuum uh, towards best. We will do uh, an excellent job in online learning um, as we get farther into it this school year. Different. Um, this first point has an exclamation mark by it because it seems like, uh, I guess it just seems a little contradictory, but there's familiarity. And I touched on this earlier, but again, last spring, this was a totally unfamiliar learning format. Well, now it's not so scary and new. Um, also, people, you know, when we talk about things like Zoom, um, which in some cases had been unheard of, right, uh, people are familiar with what that is going to entail, what a Zoom conference will look like. Um, I'll just move on. I think you know what I'm talking about there. Uh, grading and attendance. Last spring, OSPI directed school districts not to um, really negatively impact student grades, we were also um, directed not to take attendance. That is because um, some families were not prepared to engage with that model. And so that was an effort to ensure uh, equity. And uh, this time around, again, because of different conditions, we are being directed to have expectations regarding grades and attendance. Um, and I think that will, of course, make uh, the classroom a more vibrant place when all the students are there at the same time and they understand that um, there is a, there are some performance expectations, right? 
um, we have some different learning devices. New Chromebooks for our students uh, grades 6 through 12 and also staff members uh, in that grade band. Um, I think that is going to facilitate um, online learning uh, just because uh, it's going to integrate better with our Google Suite and then also the camera is just a little bit more amenable uh, because of the, the, the flip <laughs> format of a Chromebook versus um, kind of like a single uh, horizontal surface format for uh, an iPad. Um, also, here's something I think that's exciting and different at the elementary level. We have purchased a Seesaw Learning Management System for grades K through three. We heard from parents last spring that uh, Schoology was difficult, especially for our early learners, uh, difficult to use. And so we explored a different option and we think Seesaw is going to assist uh, our students and teachers um, and support effective instruction, okay? So excited about that. What's gonna be the same? Well, I think you can count on uh, schedules to be staggered, much like they uh, are to accommodate busing, you know, uh, in a normal school year. And I think this is gonna help us out because it will um, enable our parents or older siblings to assist younger learners before they go to work or they have to begin their online schooling. Um, hopefully by kind of staggering um, schedules, we will also protect uh, internet access at home because maybe not everybody's gonna be on at the same time. Um, technology for teaching and learning uh, on the on kind of the learning end of things, um, our best newest iPads, which are not the best and newest in the, you know, on the marketplace, are going to be uh, reassigned for our students in grades K-5. And then our teachers on the, on the teaching side are going to be um, using the same core four technologies as last spring. Zoom for synchronous or live learning, Screencastify, for asynchronous or recorded learning. Um, Google, um, Google is gonna be used, you know, for um, storage of documents and files, but then also we hope to use it for kind of more instantaneous messaging between um, teachers and home. Uh, we will again be using Schoology uh, at the secondary level and also the older grades at elementary and then again, you know, Seesaw um, will be uh, new for our K-3 students. The two online options. I don't think I can really uh, go into detail without first talking about the continuum of online to traditional. So we're all clear on some of the language I might be using uh, for the rest of the video. Um, under the online category, I, I, I'm going to use two different um, titles and those are meant to be uh, they're intentionally different so they describe two different experiences for our learners right number one remote learning um, is going to be uh, basically similar to last spring Hawkinson virtual academy which I have some you know uh, abbreviated HVA that is going to be more like a, an online academy you might see advertised on television uh, semi-online. Semi-online means somewhat online and uh, semi-traditional and we'll call that uh, format hybrid and that is a model in which students attend one day or one part of the week uh, in person and then the other part of the day or part of the week um, online. And um, traditional, I'm going to call that in person um, for the most part, it's the model that we're all familiar with, where a bus or a parent drops off a learner or at a high school level, they drive themselves and they get there right, you know, you know uh, before school begins at a certain start time. And then they remain in school until the end time. And that's the school day. So um, when you look through all these different um, options or formats, you see HVA. 
And that is because the Hawkinson Virtual Academy will run full year. That is gonna be something that will parallel whatever model we happen to transition to or back from, right? Um, the models are gonna be determined by our school board and the decisions will, you know, will correspond or be based on the three tier um, model that the Department of Health calls its decision making tree. And those levels are low, moderate, and high. And we would be looking at our infection rates and trends. We would be in communication with our union. And then we would take appropriate uh, action in terms of transitioning one way or the other. Remote learning, um, I'd say it, it equates pretty much with a classroom. That's why I said it's, it's like a remote classroom um, in that there's an assigned teacher. So at the elementary level, um, you know, there's a homeroom teacher. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're in Mrs. Smith's class in grade three, Mrs. Smith is your uh, teacher. If you're a third grader, that kind of thing. And then if you're at secondary, you're gonna have, you know, a six period day and you'll have different teachers for different courses. And then there would be an assigned teacher for those different courses. So um, again, it's not exact because nothing about online or very little of the online model is like an in-person, but it, like I said, it approximates it, okay? You'd have a daily schedule. And so at the elementary level, your homeroom teacher would say, here's you know, what we're gonna be doing every day at, from this time to this time. And then at the secondary level, the periods would um, follow a certain bell schedule. Attendance will be required and will be recorded. Um, even if your class is not even um, offered that day and uh, the secondary administrators will fill you in on that. Uh, curriculum is going to be HSD adopted. And what, um, there's a little asterisk by that. And what I mean by that is, it's the things that you're familiar with already. Um, I know at the elementary level, you are, you've heard things like wonders uh, for ELA or uh, Eureka Math or uh, iReady. At the middle level, um, I think there's some familiarity with collections or at uh, the high school, college prep, math, CPM. So um, those same learning resources will um, be the basis for the curriculum that's covered um, in remote learning. Um, instruction will be a blend of synchronous and asynchronous uh, teaching. And again, uh, synchronous is something that maybe sounds more technical than it is. That's live instruction and asynchronous would be recorded. Um, it could also be a teacher directed learning activity that could be independent for the student. It could also be maybe a website that a student is directed to visit. Grading will follow um, each school's grading policy and uh, remote learning will end when we transition to a hybrid model. Okay, I don't anticipate we're gonna transition um, directly to an in-person model, but the next step would be a hybrid. And um, when we do that uh, across the board on a you know, school-wide basis, uh, district-wide basis, um, remote learning would come to an end. Uh, in summary, I would say this model is more consistent in that there's a daily schedule and each schedule has some defined um, activities uh, associated with it. And it's more traditional in that the teacher guides instruction, um, students are involved in that instruction or uh, activities. And um, as you can tell above with attendance, a daily schedule and um, similar curriculum, it's, it's more of a model that we're all familiar with. Hawkinson Virtual Academy. Um, this is new for Hawkinson. and probably new for a lot of our families. Um, it's an independent learning option. And what we mean by that is, although there will be an HSD 
teacher assigned to um, a particular grade level or class, that teacher's kind of working behind the scenes to support a learner who is working through a curriculum. I won't, I won't say totally on their own, but largely on their own in their own pace. Um, work is scheduled on a daily, weekly basis. And um, let me elaborate on that. It would mean like, um, here you go. This is what the recommended daily um, goals are for time and for progress. But there's also this option where a student could flex, you know, could kind of make some decisions and um, shoot for weekly goals. And so there's a little bit of flexibility there. But when I mention that, you need to understand that that flexibility um, is something that you never want to abuse because you do not want to fall behind, which is very easy to do in an um, independent model. Daily participation and progress um, will be expected and will be recorded, um, a la attendance. Um, and then K5 and 612. So basically what I'm saying here is there are two different platforms. One is for K5, one is for secondary, both are aligned with common core uh, curricula. Okay, um, those standards that Washington State has adopted along with many other states. Uh, this is what the older generation, like me, would consider like a workbook model. Um, it's not totally that way, but in, what would happen is there are some learning modules and they could be uh, maybe a, a video lesson, it could be a section of text, could be an activity that students would engage with and then it's associated with uh, an assessment. And when they successfully complete that assessment, the computer adaptive program permits them to move on uh, because it's largely mastery based. If students struggle, that's when they would uh, expect a call or an email from the HSD teacher who would say, how can I help you? Um, I wanna support your success. Um, we're still working through the report card um, format for our K-5 learners. So I think what everyone could expect would be a progress report with how students are doing in the different content areas. At grade 612, there would be progress reports, um, but it would culminate in a semester grade. Um, remember at high school, especially high school, there are credits attached. And so um, there would be a letter grade associated with the percentage uh, that students uh, succeeded at or performed at. Um, in, the, uh, in this case, it is Edgenuity is their platform. This um, would continue post hybrid or even in person transitions. And so we are expecting families who select this option to stick with it for a full semester. Um, there are many reasons for that. And I uh, will just direct you to our FAQ page on our reopening site for you to um, acquaint yourself with. I won't go into it right now, but again, this would be for a semester commitment. In, in summary, I would say this is a more flexible and self-paced option. Um, flexible for family situation or schedule. And then for the learner, they have the option of progressing um, at a pace that is comfortable to them. Um, again, in a mastery-based model, uh, when you can demonstrate uh, proficiency, you can advance. Um, at the bottom, there is an explanation of the two providers. Basically at the, the elementary level, it's a combination of some different programs, Lexia for literacy at Moby Max and Dreambox for um, math, science, and social studies. And then um, at grades six through 12, it's a platform called Edgenuity. Here's a sample um, schedule for uh, our elementary learners who might opt for the Hawkinson Virtual Academy. That's what it is. It's, um, this falls into that daily, weekly thing I talked about where this could be the model that a family could follow. 
um, or they might want to start it at um, 3 p.m. instead of 9 a.m. But here would kind of be the, the durations uh, associated with each activity. Okay. Regardless of whether um, you're in a remote learning or the Hawkinson Virtual Academy option, this will involve some degree of parent involvement or a learning coach. A learning coach could be a grandparent, could be an older sibling, but I think we're gonna anticipate that our learners are gonna need some support, especially our kindergarten through grade three learners. Um, in pretty short order, I think we will find that students will adapt pretty quickly and they will be relatively independent um, in a few weeks. But I think there's always gonna to need to be some monitoring by parents, um, to see how students are progressing either way. Also something that's very critical, connectivity. Um, regardless of whether you go remote or you go HVA, you're gonna to have to have pretty good Wi-Fi at your house. We know that is not the case with all of our families. So we are going to um, provide Wi-Fi access inside each school Right at the start of the year, we're gonna start off with about 30 per school because I feel like that's something we can manage. Uh, remember, we're gonna to have to do temperature checks. Um, we're gonna to have to um, supervise students to ensure social distancing, masks will be required, all these kind of things. Um, if the demand is greater than that, then we will adjust and we will expand um, accessibility, right? But this is inside the schools. Um, we are also going to maintain the access point outside of the district office on the west side, kind of by fire district three. Um, internet provider. This bullet point is on there because we have um, been told that if you reach out to your internet provider and ask uh, if your internet can be boosted in any way, they might just be able to do that. They'll kind of evaluate your home and your level of service and see if they can uh, maybe consolidate your signal in some way. So we encourage families to do that. And then also um, families, I would ask that you take uh, a minute, I guess this is like a minute to two minute survey on broadband access and speeds. Um, and if you would click on that survey it is um, from our state legislature created an agency uh, to assess and then support um, greater internet access across the state of Washington, in particular rural areas, with the goal, you know, in, in like two years, that there's, um, there's greater um, service to all, to all areas across our state. All right. Um, okay, disclaimer time. This video, is, it represents our best work at this time. And um, I mentioned this already, but our school schedules are not yet finalized. I would ask that parents consider them to be draft documents, and I do not think they're going to change dramatically, but I do anticipate that there could be some fine tuning, right, or some modifications. Um, you got to understand that we will keep you current as if any, if any of those changes take place. Um, in general, we are receiving guidance that shifts on a daily basis. And um, that isn't meant to make people feel like we're not in control or there's no, um, there's no answers. There are answers. It's just that uh, our awareness and our understanding of uh, the coronavirus and then uh, uh, the best response to the coronavirus, it's updating all the time, right? And so because of that, um, we are <laughs> going to have to shift in response. So that will involve more communication. And then there's more planning ahead. Um, that's going to involve staff, uh, reopening task force, um, union representatives. And so as we go into those planning conversations, there could be some um, changes that could result from that. And hopefully those changes would be for the positive reasons to um, you know, to basically create a better service to our students and families. Uh, you can expect additional communication from the HSD um, in the weeks ahead. And that is something I can definitely commit to. 
Um, I just ask for your patience if the communication represents change, okay? So um, thank you for your patience with that and support. Um, throughout all of these changes, we are doing our best to stay focused on our mission. And there is a, there's a motto in our district and um, here it is, preparing all students for lifelong success. And um, a negative is that we are being um, basically forced into an online model due to present circumstances. Positive perspective is that our learners are gonna be um, living in an online, increasingly online um, environment in the future. And so if we do this well, hopefully we will prepare them for success. Um, also guiding all of our plans is uh, focus on what we can do for our students rather than what we cannot. Um, an example of the can-do attitude was the um, drive-through graduation ceremony last Friday. It was not like a traditional graduation um, ceremony, but it was very positive and it was, um, it was a substitute for, for what we're used to, right? Um, I know in many cases, sports and clubs are not gonna be the same, but hopefully we can offer those experiences to our students at some level. And, um, you know, some is better than none. And so, all of these plans are gonna involve um, teamwork and uh, cooperation. And so if we can commit to that um, as school district, as students, and as families, we will get through this successfully and um, we can hopefully be prepared for a return to an in-person model soon. All right, thank you for um, listening. And then I am going to uh, wrap up here and I ask that you find time <laughs> to fit your schedule to watch the school video that um, fits your appropriate grade level right in your house or grade levels in your house. Thank you all. And uh, again, I'll keep you updated. Bye-bye.